All right, hello everybody. My name is Freddy, and I'm going to go ahead and go over how we process the 30cc Rebella PRP kit. Uh, we've just completed a patient blood draw, so the next step in the process is to add the blood sample into the PRP tube. Now, in the syringe, we have 27 cc's of whole blood with 3 cc's of anticoagulant just to prevent the blood from coagulating while you're in the process of, of doing PRP. So the first step in inserting the blood into the tube is to pop off this rubber gasket on top of the 30 cc kit. Next I'll do is I'll place on a flat surface so you have an even working area and then from there I'm simply going to pop off the cover of the needle, insert it into the spout in the middle of this PRP kit and I'm going to gently just reinsert the blood into the sterile 30cc Rubella PRP kit, gently applying pressure to the plunger so I could have a pretty consistent flow of blood being fed into the tube. So you want to give it you know, gentle pressure and try to keep it as centered as possible. Um, sometimes blood does splatter against the wall, but it's perfectly fine as long as you apply it in evenly. So I'm going to keep going until I hit the 30cc marker right here, and that will let me know that I've completely filled up the 30cc Rebella P. And I've hit that mark, so we have the rest of the blood I'm going to put away here. And when you're done filling it, it should look something like this. As you can see, prior to putting this in the centrifuge for spinning or the centrifugation process, place the rubber capper back on. Now the next step before we spin it or put it in the centrifuge is to weigh out your specimen and an appropriate counterbalance. So I'm going to go ahead and place the sample on my scale, which reads that 75.4 grams. And I'm going to take one of the counterbalances, which is the non-sterile equivalent of the 30cc PRP kit, which I've taken the liberty of pre-filling. So I have one for each spin cycle. Being that this is the first spin cycle, I've pretty much pre-filled it to the 30cc line, just to makes it a lot easier for me to weigh out the counterbalance. So I'll go ahead and weigh out the counterbalance to make sure that I'm within the appropriate weight range and counterbalancing. Uh, we have an allotment of about, about up to 0 0.6 grams difference in weight over and under between the blood specimen and the counterbalance. So the counterbalance is 75.1 grams, and I'll still check the blood. And the blood is at 75.4 grams, which is okay for us to now start the process in, in getting PRP. So to start, you want to go ahead and place the specimen with blood and the counterbalance on opposite buckets from each other. And from there, securely press down the lid to shut the centrifuge. Now for our first spin cycle, we like to spin our PRP at, or excuse me, our whole blood at 3400 RPMs for a duration of five minutes. And then from there, after I've set the parameters I like to spin the sample with, or sample for, excuse me, all I have to do is press the start button, give it a press twice, and once the centrifuge activates, you'll notice the RPM slowly ramp up before the timer of five minutes counts down to zero. So from there, um, you can hear the centrifuge activate. What I like to do is I like to sit here until it gets to the appropriate RPMs just to make sure we have it properly counterbalanced and there are any issues with the centrifuge possibly rocking back and forth like a you know, wild washing machine for lack of a better term. Alright, so once the centrifuge opens and the spin cycle stops, you can go ahead and pull out the counterbalance, put it aside. And you can go and take a look at the tube with the blood specimen that we just spun down to check for separation. So, as you can see, there's three distinct layers. We have the red blood cells at the bottom. In the middle, you can see the uh, cloudy, milky mass in the middle, which is what we call our buffy layer. And everything else on top from the red blood cells to the top layer right there would be your plasma layer. 
So what I'll do now is I'm going to separate the red blood cells and the plasma. So what I'm going to do is isolate the plasma and the buffy layer. And I'm going to add it into a clean second syringe to do our second spin to further cost share of PRP for use in our next procedure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get our screw pusher, which we'll use to help us push the plasma into a separate syringe. I'm going to go ahead and open, you know, you know 30 C, a 60 cc syringe because I don't have a 30 available. Put that aside so I can draw up the plasma from this, you know, first PRP tube we worked with. So to use the screw pusher, the first thing you're going to do is unscrew the cap at the bottom, rotating it clockwise. And once it's off, you want to have the screw pusher prepped like this, where we have this base piece all the way at the top, ensuring that there's no protrusion coming out the middle. And then to actually insert the tube, all you gotta do is press down into this holder part, uh, put your hand here and rotate the tube just until you get a little bit of resistance uh, to ensure you're keeping the tube in place. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to screw off the next cap, put that to the side, and then from here, I'm going to start the process of separating the red blood cells from the plasma. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start rotating the screw pusher until I get the plasma at the very top of the spout over here, just to ensure that we don't have any air pockets we may be dealing with when, when it comes to attaching the syringe. So once I have it pushed up to the tip right there without overflowing, I'm going to grab the same syringe I prepped earlier, and I'm just going to attach it to the PRP tube. Now to attach it, all you have to do is line up the lower locking tip with the spout of the 30cc PRP kit, and basically insert it to the hole. And then from there, I'm going to continue the process of using the screw pusher to push the stuff I want into a syringe that will then house the plasma sample. So as you can see, with each rotation of the screw pusher, we're pushing up the green cap, and as a result, it starts pushing everything up into the syringe we have attached. So I'm just going to keep rotating until I get all of the buffy layer into the syringe. And, and a good indicator to let you know to stop is when you see a little bit of a red flash at the bottom of the uh, syringe we just attached. So in this case, as I'm screwing it in, you can see the distinct separation of the red blood cells in the buffy. So I really want to harvest that white bit right there in the middle. From there, see a red tinge, the connecting point between the syringe and the PRP kit. We can then take it off. So I'm going to go ahead and cap the syringe um, with the needle. 18 gauge, one and one half needle. Reason being is we're going to take this plasma sample and then transfer it into the sterile 30cc syringe for the additional spin. So I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to take the brand new sterile Rubella PRP 30cc kit and open again. You're just going to pull the rubber stopper at the top. So pull back, twist to the side a bit. You just have it hang off the side of the tube. And then from there, I'm going to take the plasma we just separated from the red blood cells and insert it into this PRP kit. So, same technique, gentle pressure when inserting it, you know, try to keep them lined up. And you want to transfer the entire contents of the syringe into this new PRP kit. There. So, same thing we did earlier, put the gas rubber stopper back on. Now what we're going to do now for the second spin is we're going to counterbalance the final product we're working with. So this sample weighed out at 59.63 grams. Put that to the side. We're going to take the second non-sterile counterbalance filled with water and weigh that, as, weigh that to see if it's the same weight. So now we are heavy at 63.68. So I'm just going to go ahead and you know, get rid of some of the water. The easiest way to do it is to tilt this upside down and take a non-sterile needle syringe, go through the spout and just draw some of the water out. So I'll pull back from the plunger so you see a little bit of water. And then just going to measure from there. 
So 59.55 grams. So 59.7 more within the 0.6 gram difference in weight that we're able to work with. So as we did with the first spin, we we'll place the tubes in opposite buckets from each other. And I'll securely close the centrifuge lid. And then from there, our second spin, we're actually gonna spin it at 4,000 RPMs. And our spin cycle will just be three minutes this time around. And we're just gonna wait until it completes the cycle. All right, so this is the completion of the second spin. Let's go ahead and take a look at our plasma sample and see how it turned out. So after the second spin, you'll notice the plasma in general is a lot more refined with the straw yellow color. And if you look closely, you can see a concentration of the platelet slash buffy layer in the middle, which signify that we just basically concentrate as, mu as much platelets as possible to give us a pretty effective PRP product. So from here on out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just harvest, or excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some of the platelet pore plasma that we won't be using for the procedure. It's gonna leave quite a bit in here to use as platelet rich, where I'm gonna concentrate some of the remaining plasma with the platelets we recovered to create us our final product. So to do that, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at how much total, um, I guess, plasma volume we have. Uh, there's a series of dashes here and numbers to help us indicate remaining volume. Um, in this case, it looks like we're at about 14 cc's of overall plasma left. Now our provider requested nine cc's of PRP. So I'm just gonna push, you know, <clears throat> four cc's of PPP into a 10 cc syringe and I'm going to use the rest to concentrate a final PRP product. So in order to do that, what you'll actually need are two separate 10 cc syringes and you'll also need two 18 gauge by one and one half inch needles. So before we do it then we're going to go back to the screw pusher tool and we're just going to go ahead and attach to the tool again, like we did the last couple of times. So I'm just going to attach that. I'm going to push some of this back up into the neck of the 30cc kit. And I'm just going to get to the point where some of the plasma is starting to stick out of the tip of the tube, but you know, not to where it spills over. Quite a way to go. And I'm at that point right there. Then I'll go ahead and attach the five, one of the 10 cc syringes. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna pull out about four cc's of just plasma that we'll go in and set aside for. So earlier, I need to get rid of four cc's of plasma. He goes the remainder of nine. So I'm just going to go to the four, which is right here. I'm just going to use another needle to cap it. So to take it off, I can just wiggle it from side to side until it pops off. And then we're going to add a needle cap, put this aside. And then from there, this is the remaining product that we're going to drop and use for the plate rich plasma. So first thing we're going to do, is I'm going to prep another 10 cc syringe. And from here, I'll go ahead and attach the 10 cc syringe to the tip of the neck there. And I'm gonna go ahead and push out some more plasma. In this case, I'm gonna take out about two and a half or three cc's worth of plasma. And then from there, I'm going to attach the needle to draw up additional plasma and use that plasma to you know, sort of mix the remaining contents by drawing it out reinserting it, causing that disruption to, you know, concentrate the plasma with the platelets and the remaining growth factors. So I'll go ahead and proceed. So I want about two and a half cc's. I think I'm going to go with three. So I have quite a bit of space to work with. And then before you pop it off, go ahead and get another 18 gauge one and one half needle for this step. We're going to pop the syringe off and 
that's brand new needle. From there, I'm going to use the needle to draw up some of the plasma. So you stick it into the spout there, and you're going to pull some out. So I'm pulling out about an additional one to two cc's of plasma. And from there, I'm just going to gently, I guess, draw it out and stir it back in to cause the remaining plasma and platelets to mix. Um, as you can see, it's slowly, slowly changing color, which indicates that you are mixing the plasma and the remaining growth factors and RBCs and creating the final PRP product. So if you're not seeing any additional, you know, changes in the color or this lodging of the platelets in the middle, that just means you're going to have to push up more, even further. So I'm going to take the screw pusher, I'm just going to rotate it a little more so you can get some of the plasma while you pushed up. And if there, I'm just going to continue drawing it with the syringe. Push up on that, draw, and then from there, just keep the whole, you know, process of mixing, for lack of a better term, whatever's left in the PRP tube. So, there, um, I ran out of plunger space. I'm just going to go to the biohazard right here. Let's push out some of the air bubbles. And from there, I'm going to go ahead and resume drying up the plasma. see in the middle. I'm just going to continue with drawing it out with the screw pusher and needle until I draw out the remaining contents. And if you run out of, I guess, needle <laughs> to draw out the remainder, you just keep pushing the screw pusher, and as a result, you're just pushing the remaining plasma up the length of the neck here. And as a result, this will be the PRP that we'll be using. So, there's a slight difference in the color. There's a little bit of a difference in terms of the yellow. Um, you see a slight pink tinge over here, which you want to see, and then for the regular PPP straw colored plasma. So from here, we just go ahead and give it to her provider so they can go ahead and continue the procedure with the patient.